Magandang araw ho sa inyong lahat and welcome to another learning session here in Seminar School Plus. Ako po si Arman Benko ng Colaico Foundation giving you another financial literacy uh, session para sa mag madagdagan ng inyong kaalaman tungkol sa inyong uh, pagkapabuti ng inyong buhay pinansyal. Marami sa ating uh, populasyon ngayon ay very prime uh, or yung uh, batang-batang populasyon. 25 to 35, yan ang karamihan ng ating uh, age population ngayon. At uh, yung age na yan, yan yung uh, edad o uh, panahon na either natapos na ng pag-aaral o mag-uumpisa na magtrabaho. Kaya ang topic natin today, para sa inyo, kung kayo magulang at meron kayong mga anak na, na nasa ganitong edad o uh, malapit na sa ganitong edad, magandang matuto, mapakinggan nyo ngayon ng ating learning session para mabigyan nyo ng further guidance ang inyong mga anak. Kung kayo naman ay uh, nandyan sa age range na yan, 20s to 30s, magandang makinig kayo ng gusto dahil uh, ang topic natin today is how to chart your life. Uh, part uh, still of the financial planning uh, session. Kaya in-entitle natin siyang starting anew. Whether kaka-graduate nyo lang or uh, nag-umpisa na kayo ng trabaho at palipat kayo ng trabaho or you want to start anew at ayusin na ang inyong buhay pinansyal. So, this uh, may specifically be catered to the 20s to 30s. Uh, in fact, sa Colaico Foundation, karamihan ng aming mga empleyado, eh, nandito sa edad na ito. Kaya sila ang una kong naisip, kasama ng mga anak ko na 22 years old na nagtatrabaho na, may isang taon na naghahanap buhay at nag-uumpisa ng kanyang career, it is always uh, good to have a good guidance. Sino at paano ba ang mga edad 20s to 30s? Uh, very unique at maganda ang kanilang sitwasyon. Una, they're starting a career. Katatapos ng kolehiyo at uh, very excited, lalo na sa gumagandang takbo ng ating ekonomiya compared to nung ako in, in my 20s to 30s or lalo na nung kakatapos ko lang at papasok pa lang sa workforce ay uh, ibang-iba sa sitwasyon ngayon. Very exciting. Yung iba naman at, at their 20s, lalo na pagpapasok na into the 30s, eh, ito yung nag-uumpisa silang uh, magbuo uh, ng pamilya. Pagkatapos ng sana maayos na relasyon, matagal na ligawan, matagal na pagkakakilalanan, eh, nag-uumpisa na sila ng seryosong uh, pag-umpisa ng pamilya. Pero dito sa edad na ito, 20s to 30s, ang pananaw ng mga kabataan sa ganitong edad, Siguro, miskin na yung mga may edad na at matagal na nagtatrabaho, eh yung sweldo mababa. Your paycheck seem to be low. Lalo na if you have serious expense items. Lalo na sa mga kabataan, uh, kung mag-iisip ka ng iyong uh, tirhan, whether you're renting or buying uh, your own place, and lahat ng ilalagay mo doon sa bahay na yun, eh that or those are cost considerations. Na pagtitingnan mo o compare mo sa iyong paycheck, nako, baka hindi mo kayanin. Second, dahil nag-uumpisa ka ng karir mo, Lalo na kung white collar or dyan ka lagi sa mga business districts, kailangan eh, medyo nakaporma ka and you uh, are considering uh, building up your wardrobe. At gusto mo professional wardrobe ang dating para uh, ikaw naman eh, merong uh, konting uh, dagdag sa dating at pagtingin sa inyo ng tao. So yung uh, personal uh, items, clothing, for work and even for play is being considered. Second, uh, lalo na sa mga kabataan, nakakapagtrabaho na, yun, you get to be very mobile, eh kailangan o oh, iniisip mo na na magkaroon ng uh, maayos, disente, na sasakyan siguro para sa sarili mo. Uh, lalo na kung uh, yung iba nga, nauuna yung sasakyan kaysa sa pag-isip nila ng getting their first home. And of course, your social life, your complete social being, uh, yung lagi mo pupuntahan, mga kaibigan, uh, events, activities that you want to get into, that's part of your social life, and also uh, uh, has cost considerations. Kaya maraming iniisip siguro at this age, eh, mababa pa yung paycheck, pero ang dami ng gastusin, kaya karamihan naumpisa yung ugali ng maling pag-ugali o maling appreciation sa pag-utang dahil sa dami ng cost or expense considerations no mga 20s to 30s. But actually, those in the 20s to 30s, you are, this is the best time to really start to plan for the rest of your life. Why? For the following realities. At your 20s to 30s, your biggest, strongest asset is not money. It's time. Imagine, at my age, I'm 45 this year, compared to a 25-year-older today, 
Ang lamang niya sa akin is the 20 years. Yes, I'm 20 years more experienced, but the 25 year older today has 20 years in the horizon to catch up where I am. And with the improving investment climate situation here in our country, that is most likely to happen if everything falls into its proper places. Ang uh, mga decision, action na gagawin o hindi nyo gagawin at your 20s to 30s will have a very huge impact in your life for the rest of your lives. In fact, the peso that you save or invest at this age, 20s to, in your 20s, easily is 10 times at the age when you reach 40. So, at the 20s to 30s, sana, sana, take advantage of your, simply, your youth. 20s to 30s, imagine, the peso you save and invest now can easily be 10 times when you turn 40. Ano bang mga kakampe ng mga kabataan or those in the 20s to 30s? Kung kayo kasing edad ko in, in our 40s, meron pa rin dahil kadalasan ng retirement up to age 60. Ang lamang ng mga 20s to 30s, they can plan and retire at our age now. Ako, I will admit on national TV, I still cannot afford to retire. And mo to most of those who are in my age, Malamang we are looking at a retiring at age 50, 55, or 60, the full uh, retirement age. The 20s to 30s, with these allies, you can plan and retire when you reach my age. Ano yun itong mga kakampi na to? Dalawa, simpleng-simple. Panahon and this concept of compounding. Time, as said earlier in the previous slide, is the strongest, biggest ally of those in the 20s to 30s. Coupled with this concept called compounding, yan ang magiging kampe at magiging uh, uh, tulak ng mga kabataan, those in the 20s to 30s. What is this thing called compounding? Compounding is, such, is just a concept, it's not something tangible, and yet it can have so much impact in your personal financial life. For example, to demonstrate the power of compounding, meaning, ang ibig sabihin ng compounding, nag-ipon ka, Meron kang kinita, yung kinita mo, sinama mo sa inipon mo para mag at continuously kumita yung iniipon mo at yung kinikita mo. You are earning on interest upon interest upon interest. What's the uh, uh, difference if you do not use compounding? For example, you save 1,000 pesos a month for the next 240 months or in the next 20 years. Kung nilagay nyo lang yan sa ilalim ng unan, laging uh, uh, binibiro na kapag nag-ipon ka, nilagay mo sa ilalim ng unan, yes, meron kang makukuha. Kung ito hindi mawawala, hindi mananakaw, hindi mababaha at maaano at hindi mo na makukuha, yung 1,000 pesos a month in the next 240 months or 20 years is easily 240,000. 1,000 pesos a month times 240 months. Now, there is a thing called interest. Yung perang inipon mo, nilagay mo halimbawa sa banko, binigyan ka ng 20% interest. Napakataas niyan. Pero for purposes of uh, demonstration, binigyan ka ng 20% simple interest, hindi pa compounding. Ibig sabihin, yung interest, kinukuha mo, hindi mo inaalaw to compound in itself. So yung 1,000 pesos a month, in 20 years, with 20% interest, simple interest, every year, that will amount to 288,000. Now, there is a difference of 40, 48,000 coming from the 20% simple interest. Yung 48,000 na dagdag doon sa inipon mong 240,000, dahil, dahil meron kang pinaglagyan na nagbigay sa iyo ng 20% simple interest. But how about compounding? If at the same rate of 20%, 1,000 pesos a month in the next 20 years, habang kumikita ng 20% a year, sinasama mo ito para lumago further, instead of just getting 288,000 from the money that came out from your pockets, 240,000, now you have an astounding amount of 2.47 million pesos. That is the power of compounding. Working with time, 20 years, Working on interest upon interest upon interest, from 240,000, you have a chance to grow it at 2.47 million pesos. 
let's expand the discussion further in compounding. Kasi ito ang pinaka-importante uh, bagay na magamit natin, whether you're in the 20s, 30s, or 40s, kapag kayo nag-iipon at nagpapalago, make sure you can compound your saving and investments or investing. Now, if you can save 1,000 pesos a month, and if you can have a compounding earning rate of 10% a year, your 1,000 pesos a month at 10% compounded a year can grow to 2.1 million pesos in 30 years at 10% a year lang, compounded. Okay? If you double the compounding rate at 20% a year, even if double the compounding rate, the 2.1 proceeds at the end of 30 years grows exponentially to 15.7 million pesos. Why did I use 30 years? Uh, according to the National Statistics Office, ang karaniwang Pilipino manggagawa works 30 years in his life, stable. After working 30 years, based from informal survey sa SSS, your average lump sum na pwede mo makuha is just about 400,000 to 600,000 pesos. Pero from your own activity or initiative of saving 1,000 pesos a month at 10% compounded a year, you can have 2.1 million pesos. Better if you have an average 20% compounded a year, 15.7 million. Ang laking dagdag compared to 400 to 600,000 pesos that you may just get from your SSS lump sum pension. Magkano ang pera ang lumabas sa inyo in 30 years? That's 360,000. 1,000 pesos a month times 360 months. 360,000 came out from your pocket. What is the potential gain? 2.1 to 15.7 million pesos. There are a number of Filipinos who work not only for 30 years. Uh, from Starting from 25, they retire at 65. And if they do this, saving 1,000 pesos a month, compounded at 10% to 20% a year, your proceeds will grow, uh, grow to 5.6 to 97 million pesos. If you are working on a 40-year period, age 25, you want to start anew, and from here on, manage your uh, financial life, you can expect upon retirement from your own saving initiative, uh, uh, retirement kitty of 5 million to 97 million pesos. And that is because of this thing called compounding and working with time. Now, there are obstacles uh, for the 20s to 30s, and even us, uh, when we are saving and investing. Maraming obstacles yan, but I'll just focus sa tatlo. And what are these? Inflation, procrastination, and your spending habits. Let's tackle inflation. Inflation, ito yung antas ng pagtaas ng presyo ng mga pangunahing bilihin. This is the inflation history of the country from 1990 up to last year, 2012. Ang maganda dito sa chart na nakikita natin, the past couple of years, bumababa na ang inflation rate. Gone are the days of double-digit inflation. Yung uh, inflation the past five years, medyo controlled na, lalo na Banko Central ng Pilipinas is very active in monitoring our inflation rate. But inflation, ladies and gentlemen, is also compounding. That's the sad part. Imagine, whatever you're buying 100 pesos 20 years ago is now, or at the start of this year, 300 pesos. 23 pesos. Whatever you're buying 100 pesos 10 years ago is 162 pesos at the start of this year. Or just about 3 years ago. Even if sinabi kong bumababa ang inflation rate, what's 100 pesos 3 years ago is 111 at the start of this year. How does inflation become your enemy or an obstacle in saving and investing for your wealth generation endeavor? Let's look at 2012. 3.1% inflation rate. That means, whatever you're buying in 2011 that is worth 100 pesos, at the end of 2012, with the 3.1 inflation rate, that 100 pesos in 2011 is already 103 and 10 centavos at the end of 2012. If in 2012, at the start of that year, you saved and you 100 pesos and you placed it in a savings account, 
And let us assume you, just, you were able to get a 1% interest earning from your 100 pesos saving. That 100 pesos will just grow to 101. But inflation has made prices of goods and services at 103. Ang bilihin 103, ang pera nyo 101. Bibilin nyo pa ba? Yes, kailangan nyo pa rin bilin. Because inflation measures the increase of prices of basic commodities. So, how will you fill the gap? That is why most Filipino households are in consumer debt. Because to cover the gap of 103 from 101, they make use of utang. If you look at the current, as of this year, middle of 2013, if you look at the current earning rates of savings deposits among the uh, hundreds of banks across the country, savings rates right now are ranging only from 0.25% to 1% a year. Babawasan pa ito ng withholding tax. So you'll get net of 80% uh, of 25% or 0.20% net for your savings account. Napakaliit. Wala pang 1%. If time deposit naman ang pinaglagyan nyo ng inyong iniipon, you can only expect about 1% to 2% a year. Inflation is at 3%. So obviously, savings deposits and time deposits are not the instruments for your wealth generation uh, endeavors. You get into these products for safekeeping or for convenience, lalo na yung mga uh, accounts na merong kadikit na ATM. So, bank products, the usual ones, the basic ones, are not the products for your wealth generation. Another uh, point that I want to stress on inflation, when you are saving and investing, you should have a benchmark, and that benchmark is the inflation rate. Yung iniipon nyo at pinapalago nyo, dapat palunin yung inflation. Because sayang naman yung iniipon nyo or iniinvest nyo, hindi siya umuurong, sum, uh, hindi siya sumusulog, umuurong siya because of this thing called inflation. Are there instruments that can uh, possibly beat inflation? Uh, lalo na pinakita ko dun sa slide ko sa compounding, 10% to 20%. Well, there are. One of it, yung isang topic natin lagi dito sa Seminar School Plus, mutual funds. The past three years, the same period that the inflation averaged 3.4%, mutual funds, the three types of mutual funds available to everyone, uh, as long as you're Filipino, 18 years old and above, or even if you're not 18 years old and above, uh, you can get mutual fund investments via ITF, in, uh, in trust for accounts. The three types of mutual funds, as you can see, from their performance, easily beat the inflation rate. So if there is one instrument that I can openly uh, promote, vouch, espouse right away, if you want to beat your benchmark inflation rate, check out mutual funds. The past three years, from 2010 to 2012, the best performing mutual funds have performed significantly, very, very high. 2010, 64%. Last year, 34%. For those in the know, um, yung sumusubaybay sa amin sa Seminar School Plus, dito sa RHTV, or sa pera-pera lang yan, sa Kompletos Recados, also here sa RHTV, nap napapansin nyo na akit pa ba ang uh, mutual funds? For example, nung 2012, yes, 34% growth. At the start of the year, hanggang nung May, tuloy-tuloy na tumataas siya. And then the past 2-3 weeks, medyo bumababa na. There are reasons for this. Ang kagandahan lang rito, uh, first, do not be alarmed na bumababa siya. In fact, this is the time that you should get in. Why? Because there's an opportunity, opportunity now to buy it at a low price. It has experience to grow at 25% in less than 6 months for 2013. It is now not impossible that it can grow back again to 25% in the next 6 months or even reach or even beat what was the performance last year. But of course, there is no guarantee. This is the nature of mutual funds or buy type of investments just like what we discussed in previous episodes here in Seminar School Plus. Another obstacle, enemy 
of uh, those who are saving and investing, lalo na the 20s to 30s age bracket, is this thing called procrastination. Procrastination is delaying. Manana habit. What you can do today, you delay for tomorrow. Siguro iniisip ng mga nagtatrabaho na, saka na ako magsasave at invest kapag ako may salary increase or pag ako na-promote. There can be so many seemingly valid reasons for you to delay. But I tell you, procrastination or delaying will cost you. Let me demonstrate. There's this Jack and Jill story. Jack and Jill are twins. The difference, aside from their gender, si Jack at age 20 started learning, viewing, Seminar School Plus. Kaya at age 20, he started saving and investing already. His twin sister, Jill, decided to procrastinate or delay, thinking at age 40, probably I have extra income already that I can now save. But it took her 20 years longer. Jack, saving and investing at a younger age, at age 20, afforded only 25,000 saving and investment fund every year. A little over 2,000 pesos every month. Ito nagtatrabaho siya. Si Jill, dahil age 40, medyo mataas na ang sinasweldo niya, he, she was able to save and invest more, four times than her twin brother, Jack, who started at age 20. 100,000 pesos every year. Si Jack, only in, saved for 10 years, meaning he only brought out 25,000 pesos a year for 10 years and stopped saving and let his investment grow. Si Jill, when she started at age 40, saving 100,000 pesos a year, four times than her twin brother Jack, only at 25,000, but started earlier at age 20, in, saved for 25 years till she reached the age of 65, retirement age. Both Jack, uh, Jack, ang suma total na lumabas sa kanya, 250,000. 25,000 pesos a year times 10 years. Ito lang ang lumabas na pera sa kanya, 250,000. Si Jill, who started at age 40, 100,000 pesos a year. In the next 25 years, saving that money, ang lumabas na pera sa kanya, 2.5 million pesos. Both Jack and Jill placed their saving in an instrument that gave 12%. Pareho lang. 12% pero compounded. Remember my slide about compounding. So, 250,000 in a period of 10 years compounded till they both reached the age of 65 when they both retired. Who had more money? Obviously, para maganda ang storya, Jack had more money. Jack, at age 65, had a total of 26 million pesos. His twin sister, only 15 million pesos. Yes, lumaki pa rin ang pera ni Jill. Ang suma total na lumabas lang sa kanyang bulsa is 2.5 million. She was able to get 15 million pesos after the exercise. But when you look at Jack, Jack was able to get 11 million more. A total of 26 million pesos. What's the moral lesson? Do not procrastinate. It, in investing, in saving and investing, it is not how much you save or how long you were saving. It is an issue on when you start saving and investing. Do not delay. As early as possible, get into saving and investing. Last obstacle is this thing called your spending habits. Okay, we have very simple tips as far as spending uh, habits are concerned. Lalo na uh, kung kayo bata pa, nag-uumpisa pa lang sa inyong career, first time tumatanggap ng uh, pera, hindi galing sa inyong mga magulang, baka tingin nyo ngayon meron na kayong karapatan maglustay, just uh, strong reminders on your spending habits. First, buy only when you need. Buy what you need, only when you need it. Don't buy because there is a sale. Uh, lalo na dito sa Pilipinas, lahat na yata ng klase ng pwedeng itawag sa sale na itatawag na. Buy only what and when you need. Second, be a planned spender. Do not be an impulsive buyer. What is an impulsive buyer? Walang kaplano-plano dahil napadaan sa mall, may nakitang bibilhin o gustong bilhin, binibili na agad. Be a planned spender means whether it's a need or a want, write down 
plan what you will buy, how much you will buy, when you will buy. You cannot buy it all at the same time, all today or all tomorrow. Plan out what you will buy today at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, at the end of the year. And what you will get three years, five years, ten years from now. You cannot get it, as I, as I will emphasize, you cannot get everything that you want to buy today or even tomorrow. Plan spender, not an impulsive buyer. Last tip, lalo na para sa mga magulang or sa mga kababaihan, separate your shopping day from your buying day. Ano bang difference? Shopping day, you're just canvassing. Window shopping, kumbaga. You are canvassing, scouting for the best product, the best price. Yung pagbili, set it another day. On the buying day, you don't canvas anymore. You go to the place, to the mall probably, and just buy the things you have planned for at the time you have set it for. Separate your shopping day from your buying day. Now, must-dos for the 20s to 30s. Now that you're starting a career, your paychecks seem low, but you want to save and invest and really prepare for the rest of your lives. The following. First, save as much as possible. Two, have and follow your budget. Three, be aggressive. Take Calculated risks. Four, pay off your debt. Uh, lalo na kung meron kayong pagkakautang nung kayo nag-aaral pa or nung nag-uumpisa kayong magtrabaho and naka-uumpisa kagad kayo ng uh, credit card debt, pay off your debt. And then, uh, before you get into serious investments, you should consider the must-haves. These are the emergency fund, insurance, and cash reserves. Last but not the least, continue your financial literacy endeavor. Uh, read books, attend seminars, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, uh, live, or even here through Seminar School Plus. This five. Now let me discuss one, uh, one by one. Save as much as possible. A strong reminder on the savings equation. Anong savings equation ang dapat niyong sundan? Income minus savings equals expenses. Bakit, ho, kay, bakit ko dinidiin yan? Karamihan kasi, si income minus expenses, uy, merong natira, meron akong savings. Kapag ganun ang equation nyo, more uh, madalas kaysa sa hindi, wala kayong magiging savings. Kailangan unahin nyo ang inyong savings. Saving is a decision, not a result. So, follow the savings equation. Bawat perang pumapasok, decide right away how much you will save. Income, Minus savings, ipagkasya ang natira sa expenses. Second, identify your type of expenses. There are only three types of expenses. Must have, better to have, and like to have expenses. Follow your money for the next 100 days. Check out ano yung mga pinagagasto sa nyo. Malalaman yung mali ang pinagagasto sa nyo kapag nauuna pa, ang like to have expenses, then your must-haves. Baka yung must-haves, pinangungutang nyo pa. Alam nyo na, mali ang pag-prioritize nyo ng inyong expenses. So, identify your type of expenses. Obviously, unahin ang mga must-haves. Pagplanuhan yung better to haves, magpalago ng pera at kung anong kinita, yun ang bilin, ang gamitin for your like to have expenses. Uh, lastly, uh, save as much as possible on our first tip or must do, yung mga bonuses nyo, allowances nyo, revenue mabuti. Baka yan ay sobra or uh, uh, yan na ang mga pagkakataon na para madagdagan at maboost nyo ang inyong saving endeavor. Uh, 13th month, baka may mid-year pa kayo. Yung ibang kumpanya, generous, 14th month, 15th month, 16th month. Yun ay mga pagkakataon na dapat nakakapag-ipon kayo. Uh, your allowances ng kadalasan binibigay, rice allowance, clothing allowance, transport allowance, from there, revenue or more money coming into you, you just manage it well, these allowances can boost your savings. So first, must do for the 20s to 30s or even to all, to all of us, save as much as possible. Next step, have and follow your budget. Okay, so dapat buwan-buwan meron kang hinanda at sinusundan na budget. From the income that comes to the household, you should know where the money is going to. There are uh, different kinds of household expenses. First, uh, there are, there's the rent. 
kung uh, nagrarenta kayo ng bahay or uh, kung nagbabayad kayo ng monthly amortization. Insurance and taxes, huwag niyong kakalimutan yan. Baka dahil dyan sa pag nakaligtaan nyo yung insurance at taxes, magugulat na lang kayo. Lalo na pag nag-monthly uh, amortization kayo, akala nyo binabayaran nyo yung banko doon sa inutang nyo pambili ng bahay. Eh dahil hindi nyo binayaran yung insurance at taxes, yun ang unang binabayaran. Kaya... Uh, you end up na parang hindi, kayo, hindi nyo natutupad yung binabayad nyo sa monthly amortization. So, be very careful. Look at insurance and taxes. Dapat sa household expenses nyo, nababudget nyo rin ang repairs or home improvements. Dahil uh, sarili nyo ng bahay yan, whether uh, binili nyo o nagre-renta kayo, meron mga gastusin sa bahay, nasira yung alulod, nasira yung gripo, uh, meron kayong kailangan ikumpuni, ipa-renovate, You should budget for it, repairs and home improvements. Kung walang ginastos for the month, baka the following month. So this month, miski na walang nagastos, dapat meron kayong natatabi kahit maliit na amount. And of course, the utilities. Water, electricity, telephone, your gas, cooking gas, association dues, kung nasa condo kayo or nasa subdivision, lahat yan fina-factor in under household expenses. Our suggestion is, About 35% of your income or yung perang pumasok, you can allot or limit to household expenses. 35%. What is the next category? Your transportation or yung pang-araw-araw. Kasama na ang inyong uh, baon or allowance kung kayo ay nag-oopisina. Kung meron kayong kinuha sa sakyan, obviously, uh, car loan or vehicle uh, amortization, kung motor pa lang ang, un ang inyong kinuha, ang inyong uh, panggas at regular maintenance dun sa sasakyan, or... Kung kayo nagko-commute, yung regular na pamasahe nyo, uh, papunta at pauwi, galing sa opisina, sa bahay. Insurance nung sasakyan, kung meron kayong kinuha, repairs, uh, you should consider that, and of course, maintenance. Obviously, kapag wala kayong sasakyan, wala yung insurance, repair, and maintenance, lalo na yung parking. But if you do, from a motorcycle to your first uh, decent, reliable uh, car, All these expenses you should consider. We can allot about 20% of our income for our transportation expenses. Next expense category are the living expenses. Dito sa living expenses, dito pinakadelikado. Why? Kadalasan dito nag-overspend. Dito yung pananaw na wala nang matitipid dahil sa dami ng gastusin. Pero sa totoo lang, kung concern na concern kayo na tumataas ang presyo ng mga bilihin at dumadami ang gastusin, actually, these are within your control. Ano ba yung mga living expenses? Your personal items, uh, pansarili, kasama na dyan ang vitamins nyo, sabunin nyo, toothpaste nyo, personal items yan. Your clothing, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, the 20s to 30s, isa sa nakaka, nakakagulat na uh, concern nila is their personal wardrobe. Clothing, that's part of your living expenses. Items and activities for your children, kung kayo meron ng pamilya, including uh, schooling, tuition fee, baon sa skwela, at yung iba pang activities dahil meron na kayong anak. Kung kayo ay uh, masyadong matulungin, donations, that's under living expenses. And of course, dito, dito sa huling dalawa na ito, dito pumapasok pag minsan yung uh, sumasabog yung living expenses tuloy nawawala sa budget. Entertainment, vacation, Recreation, tapos yung iba meron mga nakasanayang lifestyle. Pa-laundry, pa-dry cleaning, pagpunta sa barber, mga gimmick sa uh, pag-weekend, night outs, your subscription sa magazines and newspapers, or some hobbies like dance lessons, cooking lessons, or uh, your camera club, your hobbies, yan ang kadalasan uh, nagpapahirap or uh, nagbibigay sa atin ng problema kaya hindi natin nasusunod yung budget. All this, are under living expenses. And we strongly suggest you limit it to 20%. Okay? The next two expenses, or the last two, are for debt payments. And we uh, can allot about 15%. Doon sa debt payments, kadalasan credit card, most likely kaya kayo nagkautang yan because of your living expenses. You funded some of your living expenses uh, via credit card. It is alright, it's not bad. Uh, dapat mga 15% of your income pangbayad ng inyong uh, credit card or uh, other personal loans. The last category is your savings. Okay? But actually, this should be the first. Once money comes in, 
save right away. And maliit lang ang iaalat natin para hindi naman kayo uh, matipid ng husto o maging kawawa na kayo dahil lahat ng pera nyo nasa savings. Let's allot about 10%. Yes, it's the smallest but the most important expense item in your budget. It's most neglected but the most needed. Uh, yung, habang we disregard saving, the longer you disregard it, the harder and the bigger the problems it will give you because you have not given attention to your savings. Uh, this will show if your budget is working. Kapag meron ka talagang savings na naitabi right away at alam mo na yung budget mo tama. Okay? So, have and follow the budget. Uh, our uh, ratio for household expenses, 35%. Transportation and your uh, daily sustenance, allowance mo papasok sa opisina, 20%. Living expenses, limited to 20%. Credit card payments, about 15%. And your savings, 10%. What does a budget do to you? First, it guides you to spend less than you earn. Managing personal finances is just that. 50% of the game is done already. If you're able to spend less than you earn. It gives you the discipline to follow your money. If you cannot follow your money, forget about investments. Because the small amount of money that is entrusted to you, hindi nyo pa alam kung saan napupunta, hindi nyo pa nakokontrol kung ano pa ang inyong nagagastos out of that small money that you, is being entrusted to you, forget about investments. Budgeting makes you follow your money. And of course, uh, to live within your means. Two budgets, two budgets, ang kailangan nyo ihanda. Yung actual, na nagastos nyo the previous month, at yung budget for the month that is coming. If this is June, dapat middle of June, dapat ina-account nyo daily ang inyong gastusin. At the end of June, you have your actual income and expense budget. Itong nakaraang buwan ng Hunyo. At dapat handa na rin yung projected income and expense for the month of July. Two things that you should be preparing regularly. Now, part of the must-do, the third, for the 20s to 30s, be aggressive. Take calculated risk. Calculated. Ibig sabihin, alam nyo kung ano yung peligro pinapasok nyo. What are the first things to do? First, start with the land type of investments. I was advising my 22-year-old son who's been working for one year. Uh, aside from the savings deposit, get into a time deposit na. Even maliit, at least alam mo o meron kang uh, pinaglagyan na alam mo hindi mo pwedeng galawin in one year, three years, or five years. Get into that. Open a checking account. I'm encouraging my 22-year-old son, R. Mike, to open a checking account already para ma-practice na agad yung sinasabing balancing your checkbook. That is one discipline already uh, that everyone should get into. And then try or to get into fixed income investments like government securities or corporate bonds. Mga siguro alat the first three months to get into this. And alat about 10% to 20% of your investable funds for this. And then get the most of your or the balance of your investable funds into buy type of investments. Get into pooled funds like UITF products of banks or mutual funds. Then you may want to double on the stock market. Uh, for starters, get into the blue chips, yung mga kilala. Yung mga kumpanya na nakalista sa stock market na alam mong matagal na, may reputasyon, kumikita, at baka tinatangkilit nyo pa yung produkto nila. Uh, the company that provides electricity, provides the food, provides the services like telephone, buy into them. You become part owner of these companies through the stock market. Start small, start easy, get into blue chip uh, uh, stocks. And then you may want to, as early as now, get into business. Get into business does not mean you resign from your work and uh, uh, put up a restaurant, put up a big company right away. Get into the habit of first trading, buying and selling. Uh, all of that, all of that will give you a good foundation in your uh, eventual uh, business ownership if you really want to go into full-time entrepreneurship. Uh, trading meaning uh, you can try doubling on buy, uh, selling insurance or uh, being an agent of uh, real property, or buying and selling of cars. All this, you can start even at an early age. And it did not require much capital, financial capital at that. So, be aggressive, take calculated risks. 
Remember though, lahat ng ginagawa nyo, kaya kasi sinabi natin calculated risk, dapat merong nakabanggang PTT, Purpose Target Timeline. Pag wala kayo nito, delikado, na baka gumuho lahat ng mga uh, calculated risks o be, you're being aggressive, mapunta sa wala. Second to the last, pay off your debt. Uh, kung kayo, nagbata pa, nag-uumpisa pa lang sa inyong career, unfortunately, may utang na, that should be part of your budget. Pay off your debts. Uh, lalo na consumer debts. Those na matataas ang interest. Debt is not an enemy. Debt is your strongest ally. That is why uh, I'm putting emphasis to this. Why? As you go on in your financial life, you will have to get bigger debts. And it's not bad. Housing loan, car loan, business loan. And uh, you should give importance to your loan or debt payments. Why? Debt is a privilege. Hindi siya karapatan. At kapag ikaw may maayos na pangalan sa uh, larangan ng pag-uutang, all these financial institutions will knock on your door offering you loan products. The opposite is, is uh, obviously uh, in, in effect. Kapag sirang-sira ang pangalan mo sa utang, walang bangko magpapautang sa'yo for housing loan, car loan, business loan. You cannot even get visas from other countries. You want to go to America, may problema ka sa credit card, you cannot get a visa. Uh, gusto mong pumuntang Europe, you cannot get a visa. Akala mo, gusto mong uh, mag-OFW, gusto mong mag magkaroon ng uh, magandang pagkakataong kumita sa labas ng bansa, hindi matutuloy, hindi mangyayari dahil may problema ka sa credit card. So, ingatan nyo ang inyong pagkatao, pangalan, sa larangan ng utang. Utang, will be your strongest ally. Don't make it an enemy. Must-haves naman, uh, if you're in your 20s to 30s, the following, emergency fund, insurance, and cash reserves. Emergency fund, obviously, for emergency purposes. Ano yung emergency purposes? Life or death situation. Hindi emergency yung, meron kayong emergency fund equal to one month of your living expenses na na punta kayo sa bagong lugar at nakita mo yung may mall, bagong mall at merong sale doon, gagamitin nyo ang emergency fund. Emergency fund for life or death situation. You put your emergency fund in time deposit para madaling ma-withdraw. Protection means getting insurance. If you already have dependents, may umaasa sa inyo sa kakayanan yung kumita ng pera, kung may umaasa doon o ganun ang sitwasyon nyo, then you should get insurance. But be careful. Okay? Get an insurance that is right for you. Yung kailangan at dapat para sa inyo. Hindi yung insurance na inalok lang sa inyo nung ahente. Dapat maintindihan nyo ano at magkano at bakit yun ang insurance na kinuha ninyo na kayo nag-decide, hindi others ang nag-decide para sa inyo. Last but not the least of, among the must-haves, in the next 3 to 5 years, ang isang purpose-driven saving na kailangan gawin nyo, is your cash reserves. In the next 3 to 5 years, dapat mabuno nyo 4 to 6 months of living expenses. Bakit kailangan natin ng cash reserves? Kasi hindi lahat ng pagkakataon sa loob ng 30 taon, kayo ay kaya magtrabaho or pwede magtrabaho. Maaaring umalis kayo sa trabaho, matanggal kayo sa trabaho. Then, kung meron kayong 4 months to 6 months cash reserves, you have that ample time to get back on your feet and get into an active income earning activity again. Kadalasan, dahil walang cash reserves ang tao, ayan, dito pumapasok yung sitwasyon na kumakapit sa patalim, nalulubog sa utang, or uh, feeling hopeless na at wala nang magawa. But if you have this ammunition, gas in your tank, four months to six months, and then you have that ample time to really recover and be better and stronger when you finally get back to your active income earning endeavor. Last but not the least, as I've said, continue your uh, financial literacy efforts uh, by reading books, attending seminars, tuning in to RHTV because of pera-pera lang yan or this Seminar School Plus. Read, listen, watch, practice, and experience. It's not enough that you watch us here on Seminar School Plus or you read books published by the Kolaiko Foundation. The last two are very important. Practice what you learned, what you heard, what you saw, and really experience. Experience winning and also experience losing. It is just our hope that you win more than you lose. Okay, But you will lose. You have to lose. 
Because real learning will happen when that full exercise or full circle will happen. So continue financial literacy efforts. So let me summarize your must-dos for the 20s to 30s, even us in our 40s. Save as much as possible. Lahat ng pagkakataon makaipon, mag-ipon kayo at magtipid. Have and follow a budget. If you have this, number two, 50% again of the game is done already. If you can have and follow your budget. Be aggressive, but take calculated risks. Hindi porke inalok kayo or narinig nyo, malaki ang kita doon, pasok na kayo. An investor studies risks, not just returns. Yes, you can be aggressive, but take calculated risks. Pay off debt, lalo na consumer debt. Yung debt na nagpapabaon sa inyo. Are you pay off your debt para maayos ang character ninyo as far as financial institutions are concerned. Your must-haves, do not forget them. You should get them. Emergency fund, protection or getting insured if you have dependents, and building your cash reserves. <coughs> cash reserves, it can take you three to five years. It is all right uh, if it will take you that long. And last but not the least, continue your financial literacy efforts. I would like to take this opportunity as part of a uh, uh, pasegue ko na from the uh, continue your financial literacy efforts. Uh, consider uh, checking out our books. The uh, books Colaico Foundation has published, written by Francisco Colaico. They're available in all bookstores, National Bookstore, Fully Book, Power Books, all over the country. Uh, there is a book na bagay para sa inyo. Kung kayo kabataan, kababaihan, uh, OFW, middle age, with a family, there is an appropriate book for you. Go check them out. Uh, authored or written by Francisco Colaico. You may also want to uh, connect with me uh, through Facebook. Just search Armand Benko in Facebook and you will get to see me, my uh, tips, my advices, my struggles, the challenges I face in my daily uh, struggle in managing my personal finances. It's not perfect yet, but you might learn a thing or two from my success and also from my failures. So go check out uh, Arman Benko in Facebook. So thank you very much again uh, from Colaico Foundation. Uh, our contact details are hotline 0917-853-7333 or send us an email at info at colaicofoundation.com if you have some more Questions, inquiries, there is no email or text that we don't uh, reply to. So, uh, go check us out, www.colicofoundation.com to further your financial literacy endeavor. Uh, this has been Armand Benko. Again, happy to have uh, given you another session here in Seminar School Plus. Uh, from the Colaico Foundation, the first, the most experienced in doing financial literacy. We are happy to have done this with you again. And we hope to see you again next Saturday for another episode of Seminar School Plus.